Halloween, Sawain, All Hallows' Eve. Whatever you call it, it's known as the time of year when the veil between the land of the living and the spirit world is at its thinnest. It's the time of things going bump in the night, carving pumpkins, slipping on a rubbery mask, and getting ready to terrorize the neighborhood. Whether you celebrate by going door to door and extorting strangers for candy, staying in and watching scary movies in your pajamas, or going out to wreck a little havoc with eggs and rolls of toilet paper, just about everyone likes to mark the day with a little bit of spooky fun. The folks at the SCP Foundation are no exception. Sure, they see plenty of horrors in their everyday lives, but that doesn't mean they've lost the holiday spirit. Around Halloween, staff can find jack-o'-lantern-shaped sugar cookies waiting for them in the break room alongside hot cider, and there is a yearly party in the canteen with holiday tunes, bobbing for apples, and even a costume contest. But for some, these festivities don't quite cut it. They're not creepy, spooky, or ooky enough to truly celebrate the scariest holiday. By some, I of course mean Dr. Jack Bright, everyone's favorite immortal human consciousness living inside an anomalous necklace. Dr. Bright was determined to take last Halloween up a notch, and he gathered his supervisors together to pitch his latest brilliant idea, a haunted house open for one night only, filled with frightening anomalies from the SCP Foundation. His request for resources and permission to put the haunted house together were swiftly denied, but Dr. Bright is nothing if not determined. Without the use of official funds, he began plotting. He tracked down a venue, a large abandoned farmhouse a few miles away from the site. He found a discount Halloween supply store, and he watched hours of crafting tutorials on YouTube to put together the best, the scariest, the most memorable house of horrors anyone had ever seen. He planned the launch of his haunted house attraction to coincide perfectly with the annual office party. While his colleagues were busy dancing the Monster Mash and enjoying the apple cider, Dr. Bright was getting ready to open the doors, unveil his months of hard work, and scare the pants off of any customers who dared step inside. However, in all his preparations, he had forgotten to spread the word to the nearby community, except for an ad he purchased on Instagram. So when Dr. Bright's House of SCP Horrors opened for business, only three people were waiting to purchase a ticket, Janie, Maddie, and Zach, a group of high school sophomores looking for something to do before the Halloween party in the woods <laughs> later that night. As the doors creaked open, Dr. Bright ushered the teens inside with a wave of his hand. He was dressed up as Dracula, complete with a cape and a pair of plastic fangs. When he spoke, he affected a comical vampire accent. Welcome, children. Prepare for nightmares that will last a lifetime. He waited for his guests to acknowledge his incredible performance, but they just stared blankly at him for a moment. Ah, uh, are you done? Janie asked. Dr. Bright cleared his throat, suddenly self-conscious. Uh, admission is five dollars. The three teens shrugged and handed over the money. Enjoy! Ooh! He backed out of the room with a ghostly wail. Okay, bye. Maddie called after him. Follow me into the first room! Ooh! Dr. Bright's voice came from around the corner. I guess we just go that way? Zack followed the voice, and his friends joined him as they walked into a makeshift laboratory where Dr. Bright was waiting. The lights were dim. A steel table sat in the corner, covered in something dark, red, and wet. In the darkness, a cloaked figure moved about his face a long, beaked mask, his hands covered in thick black gloves. Welcome, new patients, to the lab of the plague doctor, Dr. Bright declared. Behind him, SCP-049 was performing an experiment on the remains of a cow. With the flip of a switch on the wall, a flash of electricity crackled, illuminating the room as the plague doctor looked up to greet the newcomers. Oh, welcome. May I show you what I've been working on? He held up a long, gleaming scalpel. Is that it? Maddie remarked, unimpressed. I, I think that's it, Zack replied. Kind of boring, Janie sighed. If he could, the plague doctor would have frowned. I am but a humble man of science doing my work. If that is not sufficient for you, then I apologize. I, it's fine, Doc, don't worry. Dr. Bright opened the next door. Follow me and have your spines tingled by the next terrifying chamber. Ew. The group of teens laughed. Still, they had already spent five dollars on this thing. Might as well see it through, and tell everyone at the party later about this weird man and his awful haunted house. Dr. Bright led the group down a long, narrow hallway. It smelled of rotten wood and mildew, the carpet squishing unpleasantly beneath their feet. 
Keep an eye on your surroundings, Dr. Bright called over his shoulder. We might not be alone in here. Behind him, the kids rolled their eyes. Just don't touch the walls, Dr. Bright said ominously. The group followed him, not the least bit nervous. It was a creepy old house, but there was nothing in here scarier than a cockroach. As Janie felt something crunch beneath her shoe, she stopped to take a look. Ugh, she groaned. When she looked up, she noticed something strange. Black goo dripping down the wall next to her. God, this place is gross, she grimaced. Her friends turned to see what made her fall behind, and their eyes widened. Janie? Maddie's voice wavered slightly. Zack pointed. Be behind you. Janie spun around and was confronted with a horrific figure. SCP-106 was emerging from the desiccating wall, smiling at her with a wide, toothless grin. His flat eyes filled with malice. She gasped, but then stopped. Oh, it's just an old guy. That's fine. <laughs> nice try, Grandpa. Follow me, please. Move away from the wall, please. Dr. Wright was beginning to regret bringing SCP-106 into his attraction. It seemed a bit too dangerous now that he thought about it. Uh, quickly, please! Okay, what's next? Maddie linked arms with her friends, pulling them after their incredibly cringe tour guide. Well, you're about to find out, if you can handle it. Dr. Bright opened the door with a big sweeping gesture. Step inside the kitchen of death! Oh, what's for dinner? Janie quipped. Doom, Dr. Bright grinned. The visitors and their guide walked into a dingy kitchen, rusty pots hanging from the ceiling, a wood stove crackling in the corner, something fuzzy, green, and unidentifiable growing in the sink. The first thing that greeted the group, aside from the smell of meat sizzling in the pan, was the sound of a bellowing male's voice singing an operatic aria. Sure enough, there at the stove, wearing a chef's hat that appeared comically tiny on his massive head, was a giant of a man, singing. He wore a blood-stained apron reading, Kiss the Cook. Oh, welcome! Who's hungry? I've been cooking all evening. It's an old recipe I learned while studying under Julia Child at her culinary academy. A truly famous dish. I'm a nephew, you know. Ferdinand Child. I keep her memory alive by preparing my favorite meals of hers. Though I didn't use chicken for this one. I selected a different protein. The giant man held out a serving spoon, shoving it into Zack's face. What a taste! Zack recoiled. No thanks, man. I'm a vegetarian. Suit yourself. More for the rest of us. Any takers? Ferdinand offered the spoon to Maddie, who shook her head, then to Janie, who seemed to consider it for a moment, but then turned it down. Ferdinand is what I like to call a humanitarian, Dr. Bright quipped. Thank you, sir. I do enjoy my charity work. Ferdinand saluted him. Oh, and we do have another guest joining us for dinner, correct? That's right, though she prefers her meat rare. So rare, in fact. Dr. Bright grinned wickedly. That it's still alive. I've set a place for her already. Ferdinand gestured to a small table, where a plate held a large serving of raw liver. Next to it, an open bottle of wine. Behind the little group, a woman swept through the door. She was beautiful, but eerie somehow. Her eyes glinted with feral cleverness, and under her thick, dark hair were a pair of fox ears. A tail swished behind her as she walked, and her fingernails were more like jagged claws. Did you start without me? How rude. Her voice had an edge to it, the same vaguely menacing inhuman quality that hung over the rest of her. She's pretty hot, Zack whispered. Shut up, Maddie elbowed him. No, he's right, she is, Janie piped up. The woman barely acknowledged them, instead walking to her place at the table. She picked up the liver in her hands and opened her mouth to reveal unnaturally sharp teeth. Then she dug in with ravenous hunger of a caged animal that had not been fed in far too long. Terrifying, isn't she? Dr. Bright urged. Not really. Maddie shook her head. What else you got? Zack raised an eyebrow. Meanwhile, the fox woman had finished her meal and moved on to the wine. Can I get some of that? Janie asked. No! No underage drinking in my haunted house! Only scarce! Dr. Bright spluttered. <sighs> Fine, whatever, just follow me! He led the group onward, leaving Ferdinand and the polymorphic humanoid to their strange, cannibalistic dinner party. If you're in the mood for a meal, perhaps you'd like to watch a little television. Dr. Bright gave a villainous cackle as he threw open the door to the living room. It was the least eerie room so far. A standard living room, if a bit dusty. There was an overstuffed chair, a couch, a coffee table, a lamp in the corner, and a vintage TV set plopped down in front of the couch. How do you all feel about clowns? Dr. Bright asked. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I hate clowns. Janie's face went pale. Oh, it's gonna be fine. Maddie patted her shoulder. Not like it'll actually be scary. Zack scoffed. Don't be so sure. Check this out. 
Dr. Bright switched on the TV, which began playing an episode of SCP-993, Bobble the Clown. Unfortunately for Dr. Bright, but fortunately for Janie, he had forgotten that SCP-993 doesn't show its more upsetting content to anyone over the age of 10. The three teenagers immediately collapsed, unconscious. Oh, damn it! Oh, no! Dr. Bright scrambled to switch the TV back off. As soon as the screen went black, the kids sat up, disoriented and rubbing their heads. Ah, sorry about that. Technical difficulties. I mean, uh, ooh, scary, scary technical difficulties. The kids stared at him blankly. Um, Claudia, a little help here? The three friends looked around, expecting to see someone else in the room with them, but there was no one. Are you feeling okay? Maddie looked genuinely concerned. He's fine, a voice piped up just behind her. Are you? Maddie spun around, looking for the source of the voice, but there was no one there. Oh, I get it. You've got a hidden speaker in here or something, right? Nope, the mysterious voice laughed. It's just me. Hey, watch this. Suddenly, Janie's phone floated out of her pocket, hanging in the middle of the air as if held by an invisible hand. Rude, she snatched it back. Pretty good. I almost didn't see the wires. Zach smirked. No wires, kid. Just me. A cushion flipped off the couch on its own. The lamp tipped over on its side. The TV remote careened across the room. Yawn. Zack rolled his eyes. You came here to get scared, not for basic magic tricks. You won't be so cocky when you see the next room. Dr. Bright grimaced. So show it to us then, Maddie retorted. I will if you just go that way. Yeah, that door. Open it. Dr. Bright sighed. Blah, blah, blah. Welcome to the infirmary. Beware of the patients. They bite. Blah, 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 blah. Just go. Dr. Bright led the group into a strangely bright room a jarring contrast to the rest of the house. It was lit with buzzing fluorescent lights and contained absolutely no furniture. As they walked in, they could hear the rattling of chains, but they couldn't make out the source of the sound at first. Then a figure lurched into view. It looked like a person, but there was something horribly wrong. Their skin was covered in patches of yellow gangrenous tissue. Their eyes were glassy and vacant, and their mouth hung open in a slack, empty expression. All along the wall, there were people chained up and straining steadily against their bonds, shuffling toward the group as they drew closer. Okay, zombies. Classic. I get it. Zack shrugged. They're kind of creepy. Maddie shivered as one of the creatures snapped its jaws at her. He couldn't get close enough to take a bite, but the intent felt real just the same. They're not real. It's fine. Janie gave Maddie's shoulder a comforting squeeze. I'm afraid these poor souls are indeed all too real. Dr. Bright's energy was restored as he saw a bit of fear creeping into the group's sarcastic demeanor. Victims of a complex prion disease, one with no known cure. Once they were infected, they were lost within a day. Now they're hollow shells of their former selves, walking corpses with only one goal, to devour the living. Sure, totally. Zack laughed, but his eyes flickered nervously from zombie to zombie. The room smelled like decay, thick and nauseating, and these people didn't seem like actors. <laughs> Next room, please. Maddie's voice shook, betraying her frazzled nerves. But I haven't shown you my favorite specimen yet. Over here. Dr. Bright led the group to a massive glass tank where something fleshy and vaguely humanoid was crouching inside. It was shaped almost like a person, but as if their body had begun to melt. Skin had turned to something soft, slick, and slimy looking. A palm slapped wetly against the glass, and the group noticed that its fingers looked webbed excess skin growing between them and stretching out, making the digits look more like tentacles than something human. Then, it looked at them. Or rather, it turned its face toward them. The flesh had spread over the place where the eyes, nostrils, and mouth should have been. Instead, it was just smooth and blank all over. For the first time since they entered the haunted house, the three visitors had nothing to say. This is a particularly awful disease. Highly contagious, highly aggressive. Thankfully, it's been contained, mostly. Just don't tap on the glass, you might aggravate him. Then who knows what he'll do. With a creak, he opened the next door. Shall we? The three teens nodded silently, and glancing over their shoulders one more time at the eerie figure in the tank, quickly followed him out. Enjoy the change of scenery, Dr. Bright commented as he led the group out of a side door back into the crisp autumn air. We're going out of the main house to a greenhouse over here. We could use a little bit of nature, don't you think? So, killer plants, or what? Zack guessed. You'll have to wait and see. Dr. Bright stopped at the entrance to a large glass greenhouse, the glass dirty and opaque from years of disuse. Prepare yourselves. It's a little swampy inside. In the greenhouse, naturally, there were dozens of different plants, vines creeping up the walls, colorful flowers blossoming, moss hanging down from the ceiling. The air was humid and hot, a jarring change after the cool night breeze just outside. 
the floor was flooded with a shallow layer of stagnant water, green pond scum resting along the top. These are new shoes! Zack groaned as his pristine sneakers disappeared into the muck with a splash. Are there bugs in here? Maddie winced. Oh, absolutely! Dr. Bright chuckled. I hope you've all had your shots, by the way. What? What's that mean? Janie demanded further explanation, but Dr. Bright provided none. As they trudged through the greenhouse, the water grew deeper, climbing higher up their legs until it reached their knees. Oh, what's that smell? Janie pinched her nose with a grimace. Why don't you look over there and see? Dr. Bright pointed to an area just ahead, where the water was rippling curiously, as if something was just below the surface. A dark patch of tangled, greasy hair had slowly begun to surface, followed by a modded green face. Large, wide eyes stared at the group as SCP-811 emerged from the water. You hungry? Dr. Bright asked. She nodded silently, looking intently at the teens. They're not for you, they're guests. Here. Dr. Bright produced a dead possum, which he threw toward the Swamp Woman. She held the carcass in place, slowly melting it with digestive fluid that leaks from all of her slimy pores. If I get sick from this place, my mom will sue you. She's a lawyer, Janie threatened. Let's, uh, move on then. We're almost at the finale. Dr. Bright and the kids left the Swamp Woman to digest her meal and headed back towards the main house. Follow me into... the basement. Careful, it's dark down here. Dr. Bright flipped a switch and a single dim flickering bulb illuminated the rickety wooden stairs down into the blackness of the basement. Watch your step. Who knows how stable these stairs are? As the group descended into the depths of the house, they could hear the sound of something sobbing, softly. Whatever it was, it sounded positively heartbroken. At the foot of the stairs off to the side, they could see a tall, thin, pale figure with a burlap bag over its head. Its arms were wrapped around itself and it was shaking. So what, we'll pull the bag off and it's something really scary? Maddie guessed. Oh no, we won't be touching that bag. If you value your life, you'll trust me when I say that's not worth it. He's plenty scary without getting you all eviscerated. For a creepy basement, this is pretty boring, Janie sighed. Still, the group continued to follow Dr. Bright. As they passed the shy guy in the burlap sack, getting further and further away from the light of the stairs, the walkway began to narrow. They left the main room of the basement and squeezed into a tight stone pathway, one that forced them to walk in single file, one right behind the other. They couldn't hear the sobbing anymore, couldn't hear Dr. Bright making cheesy ghost noises or trying to build up the atmosphere. All they could hear were their footsteps, their hearts beating, and the sound of their own breathing. Then, they realized there had been four sets of footsteps, but now they heard a fifth coming from somewhere up ahead. Whatever it was, it was getting closer and closer, and it sounded big. It sounded like nothing they'd ever heard before. Just when the tension was so palpable, wound so tight that they couldn't take it anymore, Dr. Bright clicked on a flashlight and illuminated the monster that stood just before them. Roar! I am Rollman! A massive furry creature stretched out its arms, filling the chamber and leaving no escape. The kids screamed louder than they ever had before and ran back the way they came. They sprinted up the stairs, back through each room, and out the front door. As they sat on the grass outside, catching their breath, Dr. Bright emerged from the house. He was beaming with pride, and he was clapping. So I did it, didn't I? I really scared you. Are you gonna do this again next year? Maddie asked eagerly. I wasn't impressed at first, but you really pulled it off. Janie nodded. Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool, Zack shrugged. You have no idea how happy I am to hear that, Dr. Bright smiled. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure my bosses will let me get away with this one again. Pretty sure I'm in big trouble for doing it this time, but you three made it all worth it. Here, Janie reached into her pocket and pulled out an egg. We were going to use this later if the place sucked. You earned it. Dr. Bright wiped a joyful tear from his eye, accepting the gift. Happy Halloween! Now you'd better run along to that party before it gets too late. The creatures are, uh, getting hungry. As he watched the three walk away, heading off to make more memories, he felt a sense of satisfaction. No matter what the bosses did to punish him, or how many containment breaches he'd risked that day, he knew he'd given those kids a Halloween they would never forget. Now go check out SCP-823 Carnival of Horrors and SCP-097 Old Fairgrounds for more terrifying attractions from the world of the SCP Foundation.